guitar player and uh, vocalist in Architecture of Aggression, also serves as band leader. Hi, my name is William Bishop. I play bass guitar for Architecture of Aggression. Um, I was also very heavily involved in doing the, the pre-production and post-production on Acts of God, the new album. Hi, I'm Anton. I'm the drummer and vocalist for the band, one of the two vocalists. Um, I wrote the concept and all the lyrics. Regression was founded back in 1995. Uh, it was me and Anton and our bass player back then, Brian Liebenberg. I uh, started the band in a, uh, our father's garage, just fucked around there for a while. Didn't have a name for quite a long time. Eventually we voted and we came down um, to Architecture of Aggression. And I feel since we started the band, we really grew into our name. We used to do mostly covers in the beginning. We were more into grunge and 70s rock. So we didn't start off as an extreme metal band in the beginning eventually got there through you know, evolving and listening to other bands and influences and stuff like that. Um, we are playing the local scene till about 98, early 98, and then we moved to London for three years, plus minus. I got exposed there to a lot of new music, a lot of new bands. That really brought another heaviness to us. We saw more death metal bands like, we really got more into extreme metal like that. Um, it's all of our favorite bands, and that really defined the band. You know, 
you got into contact with guys that really do it for real. You can see it's real people doing it, and it showed us that we can achieve the same, you know, goals that they have. Bands like Slayer or DSI or Northern Angel or whatever. Came back in 2000, October of 2000. Got rid of our original bass player. Things weren't working out musically, emotionally, everything. We just had enough of each other. Played around the scene for about two years as a two-man band. All the other now. A two-man three-piece. Two-man, yeah, exactly. Eventually, we got Nardis. Used to play for Sh yeah, for Shadow Lord back in the day. He helped us out for like a year, and he actually did all the bass work on the Manifest Destiny album. Recorded that. Uh, then we had to part ways again. We did like another year or so as a two-piece, three-piece band. Uh, eventually, William, we hooked up with him at uh, the old Zeppelins. He came to us and said, you know, he wanted to start like the most evil hardcore band. And then he anti-religious, anti-religious. Yeah. And then he found out about us, and you know, he didn't have to do it anymore. Just join our band. <laughs> Petitioned him, and things were rocking from the first day. And you know, like this little punk kid wants to play bass. Uh, let's do, let's humor him. But oh my God. <laughs> So yeah, so that's oh, basic. Nothing. And since then, since to, since since he joined us in 2004, he's been you know dominating the local scene and traveling and touring and you know, of course in car. Yeah. <laughs> people people are paying attention so you might as well use it for something decent you might as well use it for, to make a difference if you can even if you reach one person out there it's better than reaching none yeah, so none of our music is, is is really like telling you to go out there and worship satan or to go and drink yourself completely sick and, and fuck as many bitches as possible it's um it's all very stuff that we take very seriously you know it's um it's all very serious uh, social commentary that we really would like more people to you know to to hear and to understand and to see our point of view. I really do very little, very few um, fantasy lyrics or fantasy based lyrics. One or two songs from the older days, but all the new stuff is very, it's all based in reality. Yeah, we just look at the world and when we find that the noise is about it, we sing about it. Because that also comes a lot from from studying it a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, in a big sense, we are we are three experts on religion. I mean, we've we've really uh, understood it. We're constantly learning more about it and and about humanity in general and and the political forces and you know uh, politics. Yeah. So 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 it is it is stuff that we are pretty well informed on, and it's um, you know, which which is one of the reasons why we like to talk about it. I guess. Each album is like history. Yes, education through death metal. Yeah. This album, the concept actually came first. I've had the concept for almost since the end of, the, since we finished recording the previous album. And, but it changed a lot because it was always going to be called Acts of God. But the idea was slightly different. It was going to be a bit more, originally a bit more tongue in cheek, um, very sarcastic, almost like the one song about crucifixion. <clears throat> it's just very satirical. But then, uh, but I didn't have the full idea yet. That was still brewing in my mind, and I like changing things a lot. And I read Richard Dawkins' The God Delusion, and everything just fell into place. And I learned a lot more, and I'm like, okay. And then <clears throat> started solidifying. Originally, the idea was <clears throat> going to be about attacking all the different religions. But then it would probably be a three or four disc album. And then, so at the moment, we pared it down to just uh, monotheism, the Judeo-Christian. Islamic religions because it's basically all the same thing, based on the same shit. And but the biggest the, religions, I yeah, they're the biggest and bloodiest religions. And um, I was actually a bit bad at the lyrics and stuff. Like I had the concept of like schedules where I click and I just didn't have time to write. So I only wrote most of the lyrics after we we recorded the music. The only song that we actually was that's based on lyrics or lyric parts was Slaves of God. Uh, opening to uh, like the first actual song of the is Islamic part of the album, but the rest I actually sat afterwards with the rough mixes from the album and 
like, because I had the ideas of structure and everything before we went in. I knew which song was going to be about what, but I just hadn't put pen to paper. And then during the studio time, I actually sat down and wrote. So most of the stuff, a lot of the songs, the lyrics were written the day before we recorded them. So rush, not rush, but it's like very interesting. Ooh. The way doing it, but it actually came out very, very well. The thing is, a lot of, a lot of the concepts you had, and you did a lot of yeah. research, you yeah. went to the internet and you researched a lot of, about all three religions, and uh, you, you, know, you, had, you had a lot of documentation and you know, mo bookmarks you made in, the, in different books like the God Delusion and then in the Quran. He went through the Quran and he was marking off passages. So you had a, that, he did a lot of research into it, like about a year's worth of research. You had all of the research there, but I think he was struggling a bit more to get it into a, a poetic no. form because there's so much information. Why do you cut out? What do you put in? Because I mean, some of the songs in the new album that actually comes directly word for word out of the, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Quran, just like that, passages we use just like that to show, you know, word for word out of their own mouth, the brutality of their own religion. But, but I mean, even the, because the mimetic part of the album is very scientific, especially mimetophage. So it's like having passages is almost like a mini dissertation and having to try and fit that in and make it lyrical, that took a while, so like, but got there in the end. What happens with that though is, is, is because we, we didn't have a lot of the lyrics ready before the music, the lyrics didn't interfere with the music. Mm. So the music was able to be like uh, completely run away with itself, you know, uh, and as an instrumental sort of feel. And then, and then to put the lyrics on top of that was, was actually very nice because very often what you'll find is that um, if, you, if, if you do take the, the, the vocal side of things too seriously, it can, it can uh, you downplay. Know, downplay the rest of the music because you're making space for the vocals. Whereas we didn't do that at all. The vocals, the vocals are fitted entirely into the music as, as we wanted it to be written. Most of the lyrics, it was nice to actually have the music there sounding pretty good and then writing, like, listening to the, the section and then trying to take a passage and fitting it in there, changing this word. So a lot of it, because there's a lot of odd times, and before we would just sort of sing over it nonchalantly and it would just work. The time is structured along melodies almost and odd time signatures. So it's actually, singing it makes it easier to play because it, it's better than counting and laugh. Yeah. But it's also interesting because after we did the final vocals, it was Interesting to you actually hear the songs in completion for the first mm -hmm. time after a year, now that you actually have the vocals over it, because we, we didn't know what it's going to sound like. You had the music for a long time, and then at the end, suddenly you have the vocals over it, which we didn't know what it's going to sound like, and it came out awesome. We were very happy about it, but it was, we were the first to hear actually like, what it's going to be like when it's done, you know, and like, we didn't know what it's going to sound like until we actually finished it. And that was a very interesting experience, a bit nerve wracking in a sense. That's my job. I'm I, 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 told you. <laughs> I didn't say I would get it done, and I did. Yeah, no, for sure he did. Yeah. I panicked them some late so, nights. So, so the, the, the vocal approach was a lot more gung ho this time around. It was the more like, I guess, almost like you would do like a like a jam session. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because yeah, I prefer normally writing the lyrics a long time ahead of the thing. And the, the, the cool thing with this is like because normally I'd have the lyric sheets and then we'd fit the music to the lyrics sort of. It was interesting this time because the music was there, the lyrics go, all the vocal parts go perfectly over the music. Actually, a bit more streamlined that way. But obviously, this is not the first time we've recorded or done an album, so it was easy for us. Actually, it was much easier this time to find the right parts where to sing the vocals. It came actually very naturally once we started applying the, the vocals and the lyrics to the songs. It's like, and it came out much more melodic in some places than I ever expected it would. So. I'm very proud of it, especially on the time frame we've had as well. It came out very good. I think most people are going to hear it. They're not going to think it's like the, the lyrics were written the day before. Even the, even the quality of the lyrics, you know, it's like really really good. And some really really, really yeah. they're awesome with it. So I will get an impression. You have to buy the album and read the lyrics. You ask those, the Stop. 
The music has has evolved a lot. I mean, since 1995, I, I don't actually. I mean, I, I didn't know it anyway back then. I, I was I was quite young actually. <laughs> but, uh, quite young. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. So but, am I for you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but the music has, has evolved, especially since I've since I've joined the band. I've I've seen how that's happened. It's, it's become more and more and more technically challenging. It's um, which is absolutely awesome because it's it's it, 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 we all three of us challenge each other a lot technically on our on our individual instruments and in a band we like to come up with stuff which is going to be difficult to play and then get it right you know through as, as hard as it might be so um, but some of it's also just like like you could say natural selection mm -hmm. evolution mm -hmm. um, you know we've been going for 14 years now so we've been building you know we always have a basis we, we do an album and that's the music and we try to always better the next music and better and better and we want to because our, our taste of music has changed a lot too. We were, it used to be much more simpler bands back in the day, like Metallica or Megadeth. Not to call them simple, but through the years it's progressed more to more extreme metal bands, bands like Cryptopsy and like uh, things like Liquid Tension Experiment and Dream Theater, which is technically more challenging because as musicians we're always striving to better ourselves. So we're always looking to bands that are at the top of their game and which we derive inspiration from. Yeah, bands doing new and exciting things. Rehashing metal hammer. Kick our asses and we're like, fuck, yeah. we have to be this, you know? decided to do was to do the 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 hard heavy tracks the the main meat of the album at um, a studio in Pretoria North at Volmer Records uh, it's an amazing setup that uh, Lani van der Waal has up there he was the recording engineer for that um, yeah he he has the facilities to be able to do drums in a, in a proper stone room which gets a very nice sound and guitar and bass all all there at once so we chose to do all of that stuff there, but at the same time the album, because it's a concept album and it has a lot of a lot of in between pieces and ideas, you know, which uh, which fit the whole thing together. A lot of um, about three of the tracks were done here in in my home studio that I've been putting together for the last sort of year. And then just to give you an idea of the equipment that I'm using, I've got um, here I've got a Behringer mixing desk, which um, essentially runs all of the, um, all of the inputs from from the microphones which I've got over there and uh, my good old bass amp at the side, the headphones and the sound cards. So this is the nexus, this is where everything gets controlled from. I've also got a, a, a MIDI keyboard, a controller keyboard, which, uh, which gets used plenty too. And then the computer. You know? What you're hearing here is the outro for the album, which is called Requiem for a Meme. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, the, the composition features um, a bass guitar, which, uh, which you're hearing at the moment, djembis, um, trombones, there's about five trombones, and a choir of about 15 voices, of which I did all of them myself. Um, <coughs> the software that I'm using for this stuff is Nuendo. It's, uh, it's uh, pretty good software for this, um, for this kind of thing. You can also do video editing in it, which is quite nice. But um, generally speaking, this editing software tends to tends to be much the same. If, if you want to um, if you want to move something, then you must be able to move it. You know, um, the the functionality that you that you have it tends to be the same on on any platform.
we should do it to click or not? Yeah. Okay, cool. months months here re rehearsing every single track to the click track because these songs have a lot of tempo changes and time changes in them so mm. it's not the kind of thing where you put on a click track and then you just play the entire song and that's that you, we had to be prepared for every single time change so that so that we could actually perform that entire each each and every song to to the given click track and and and, and we did that like we developed a very good work ethic about it, and we and we really worked it like that. So I think I think that we ended up putting a lot of a lot of effort and time into into getting the music that that tight and that ready to be recorded, which is one reason why the vocals actually we didn't have as much time to to work on that, you know, because because we were focusing so much on the music. And well, what's really cool is that obviously William has his studio from home, and that really really helped like because he created all the click tracks and did all of that, and there's obviously. The intro, the outro, and the middle piece of the album. William wrote and recorded here at his studio. Uh, we actually did one acoustic track here as well. But anyways, he had the tools here to do that because previously we had to rely on other people to create our click tracks. And our music is very complicated. And it would happen the day before, and then you get into the studio and you're not prepared with it. So it takes a lot longer to get it ready and to, you know, you, you sort of got, got caught with our pants down. But in this album, we did. We went in there. It took us six days to lay down all the tracks. Perfectly did one or two takes because what's different about this album, just to sort of jump the gun a little bit, is that uh, we didn't do really a lot of fixing or anything like that in this album. One time, like yeah. when you hear Anton's drumming, that's pretty much him taking the best take and we play the whole song from beginning to end. You know, that's him raw doing it. Where a lot of guys, what they do is they play a track and it's not bad. And then the studio engineer would take it and it'd actually align everything perfectly the whole time. Sit there for hours and hours and hours after mm -hmm. weeks of coffee months. and cup of coffee and cup of coffee and cigarette after cigarette after cigarette and put every single goddamn bass drum exactly where so it should be. We felt and that gives you a very, very machine like feel, which we didn't want. We wanted a very natural. Old school, like they didn't all that. You rush your ass if you go into the studio and you record it. You and know, especially you had mentality from the pre production. From what we said we did, the, the previous album was quantized. All the bass drums and the guitars and uh, bass, and so we wanted to avoid that because we wanted to go for a no, more natural feel. Because we're not a, we have cyber influence, but we're not a cyber band. And having that idea from the beginning, it makes you work hard. It's, you know, if, if you make a mistake, it's going to get recorded. I mean, there's a little flame here or there, and, but I mean, all the good recordings we listed, and everyone fucks up a little bit, but that's what gives you a uh, replay value. Uh, but knowing that it makes you work harder, because if you know, like, oh, well, I can be a bit sloppy today, it's cool, the engineer will fix it, it makes you lazy and drops your work ethic. And a lot of bands nowadays do that, they go and they record and then they don't come back for a couple of months if the engineer fixes everything, makes it everything nice and perfect and cleans everything up. But that's like airbrushing a model for a FHM sheet. See, in real life, she's like, it's pretty, but not that pretty. Like it, 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 beca it becomes unrealistic because no one can play that tight. You can be super tight and no, no man is a machine yeah. or woman. And, and, and for that matter, who really wants to sound like one anyway? Yeah, it's boring. Right? There's, 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 there's very subtle um, time, time dynamics, tempo dynamics that happen when you're, when you're playing uh, like this without quantizing things, um, which, which gets stripped out completely when you, when you quantize it. I, ideally, uh, I, I guess one thing which we, which we might even look at 
at some point in the future is recording it, rehearsing with click, but then actually actually performing performing the work without without a click track, so that you allow those those tempo dynamics to exist there. So we're we're with this album, we we really did explore that, you know, like explore actually playing as a band and, and, and getting it as good as possible, but working together to be able to do that rather than individually laying down your parts and then trying to fix it afterwards. And that was cool, definitely, because the previous album <coughs> and with click tracks, with the, I went into record the lay down the drum tracks first, but with just a ghost track on the guitar and click. So no one's there, you're just in a room by yourself, gets through the headphones and you play. Is that as a musician, that's not how you play in a band. If you're a studio muser, you used to do that, that's your thing, whatever. But uh, if you're in a band, it's the feel of the band, the energy of the band. Interaction and, yeah, between exactly. musicians. And with the studio we recorded, there was a separate drum booth. This and time. they were uh, playing along with, but uh, their parts didn't get recorded, just the drums. It was isolation. But I mean, it made the world of difference, just being able to see each other and jamming and everyone having fun instead of sitting in a cold, isolated room and just having something in your headphones and you play along because it sort of strips it. It's like shooting a porn movie but one actor at a time and going through the motions it's just the same. <laughs> <laughs> It really feels like a sort of a, a double-sided sword, in, not in the normal kind of way, because you've got you've got the the music, which is which is so intense and technical and really dominating, and at the same on the other side, you've also got this really deep and um, and Im impressive um, understanding of religion on the, on the new album. So it's 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 uh, it, it's strong from from start to finish in 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 every aspect. It's uh, it's really really potent. I think this is technically the most challenging album we've done so Absolutely. far, you know, definitely. But we did a lot of work, you know, like about seven months or eight months of pre-production, working and writing. And when we got into the studio, we, we kicked ass. We just we <laughs> yeah. went in there and we laid down the law, but it's because of all of the months before and hard work. Most people, like when they hear it, it's obviously going to be a, it's a very big leap from the previous album. And I think they're going to wonder how the hell we did what we did. But obviously, once again, for us, it was a natural process. We're like we, when we came out with our previous album, we're like, how are we going to make it better, you know? And then, yeah. from listening to different bands and just, you know, you know bettering ourselves as a musician, it naturally became easier to start incorporating faster ideas and more technical ideas on our instruments. And came out more naturally through our music. Also, also through through doing a lot of jamming, because that's one thing which we take very mm. seriously. Every time we rehearse, we. Uh, we do a jam where we just we just we just flow with it and, and we listen to each other and we pick up where, where everyone else is moving and stuff. Through through that, the style of the writing on on this album has has become very much like that. We don't have the structured verse, chorus, verse, chorus, B section sort of uh, an attitude. It's a much more uh, natural, um, progressive, yeah, flowing, yeah. progressive sort of a, a flowing feel to it. There's lots of themes which come back and there'll be even some themes which come back over the album. But um, but in the songs, the, the, every single one has a completely unique structure, uh, and that and that did come a lot from 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 the jamming because we really enjoy doing that. It's it's uh, it's awesome just to be able to really flow with the music rather than having to think too much about you know what are what are people going to want to hear and such like. We also record our jams and then we listen back to it and we try to do good stuff and whatever. Yeah. But also you know just having free form jams like that really pushes you as an individual because now all the, the techniques that you're rehearsing in the week you get a chance now to experiment with it yeah. and bring it out and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but you come up with really wacky ideas and new riffs that you wouldn't in a normal situation you're just writing by yourself yeah. would come up with now you have the whole band flowing around each other so the music is more flowing and it happens more natural because we're feeding off each other we really in the last four years have really grown together as musicians and as people because yeah. we've been touring a lot together and playing a lot of the music, so it gives us a bit of chaos that we work with. And when yeah. we rehearse the, 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 the normal songs, that gives us order again. So it's nice to have the chaos and then the order, and you take the best out of two. And that I really write an album. believe mm. it makes you better as a musician. Jamming, most of the people jam, jam before you, you know, start and to warm up. <laughs> Not 
trying to promote anything. I'm just uh, giving my opinion. Basically, and the thing is, mm -hmm. I like to. This is a culmination of my questioning things and trying to find out about it and just giving my opinion and version of it. And I want people who didn't make up their own minds. I never want to say, don't believe in that. Oh, here's a new shiny thing to believe in. Because yeah. mm. then you're no better than anyone else. Yeah, yeah. But hopefully it'll plant seeds of doubt. And then a lot of people will take it as gospel. They're like, yeah, but look at what they said. And, well, and, which is also good. Everyone needs to go through that change. You have to go through that to get to the other side. But I'm not trying to push any system. So, I mean, even the term atheism, I actually don't like mm. it. Because it's yeah. another pigeonhole one. Mm. Exactly, exactly. But it's uh, what I want people to do is look at the facts. So I might be wrong on some of the things. Like but I did get a lot of it in internet. I got stuff from the holy books themselves. But to get people to think in, did they did this really happen? And go research it and go find out more about religions. Because most religious people know nothing about their own religions. And by that way, start questioning everything and find your own true path. Break away from what you've been taught and indoctrinated. And as I said with the Rockingham religion as well. We have freedom of religion, now we need freedom from religion. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we'll also inspire some more um, some, some more good metal musicians in this country, because there's a lot of very good ones at the moment, but um, when it comes to this progressive technical side of things, we're, we're, we're really are pushing a lot of boundaries, so I'd, I'd like to see more people mm. you know, like wanting to take up bass and wanting to take up drums and this style of music. Mm. So it's a, very much the music side of things as well is 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 is, yeah, is paramount. Just like we, we want to inspire yeah. people to you know to to think for themselves and you know like, but also at the same time, you know, inspire musicians. You know, it's like wow, that's amazing. I really want to you know be able to play like that yeah. and just lift up you know even the local metal scene because there's a lot of good musicians here, a lot of great bands, and it's time that bands like you know South African bands start getting international recognition. And hopefully this album will do that. As well, you know, but inspire. It's, it's, I think it's a good message for everybody in the world to, you know, enjoy at this moment in time. And the music is good. Yeah. Absolutely, the best musical work that I've done thus thus far in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of it. Um, yeah, it's been very satisfying. Very satisfying. Buy it, make us rich. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. very, very, very happy with it. Very impressed, especially with, with these two guys, their musicianship and everything, and, and my own abilities on this album. And the Roof Monster. Uh, I just think we really pushed ourselves as musicians, and I think it's a really good album musically. It's intense. There's some really extreme moments, and there's some really progressive and jazzy moments. I think musically it's, it's one of the best things we've ever done. This is the best album we've ever done until the next one. This next one deals with Islam and it's called Slaves of God. <laughs> Oh, my God. 